welcome back to the Phantoms Fanatic YouTube channel. I am back with another review, and this review is Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, released in 1981, starring Harrison Ford, Karen Allen, Paul Freeman, John Reese davies Alfred Molina, and others, and it was directed by Steven Spiel. The story of Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lark Stark is that Indiana Jones, archaeologist, explorer, college professor, set place in the 1930s in the middle of Hitler's reign over Europe and stuff like that, and he is contracted by the U.S. government to try to find the Lost Ark, you know, the thing that hold the original Ten Commandments. His arch nemesis, I would say, Belloc, played by Paul Freeman is also after the Ark, working with the Nazis. And throughout the whole adventure, he goes to Cairo, you see plane shots, and we get a pretty good action-adventure movie that became an all-time classic. So for this review, I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be using movie clips and stuff like that, and dive more into what scenes stand out, why the scenes work, and using movie clips to my advantage. This will be different than how I normally do stuff, where I just give my general opinion on the film. This will only be done with movies that I can get footage of. So new releases, I'm not going to do that, because those movies, I'm just going to make them like my other videos. This one, and older films, I'm going to dive more into this. And the reason why I'm covering this movie, and I, and I plan on covering the other three movies in the franchise, because the newest one, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, comes out later this year in 2023. So, anyways, let's talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark. I really enjoy this movie. It is a very good action-adventure movie. First of all, I would like to talk about what I think this movie does really well and is showing of how to do certain things with cinema and movie making in general. One of the things in this film that I think it exceeds over everything is setup and exposition and delivering information to the audience in a creative or having something else going on in the background while the plot is advancing. So you at least always have another thing to worry about or the film just delivers exposition in a way that makes sense. Because you get that iconic opening shot of the people following Indy throughout the jungle, and the one guy tries to betray him, but the thing is, when Indy's revealed, and the build-up to it, John Williams' score is really dark. It's suspenseful, almost, and you see Indy's face cast in shadows, and as he walks forward, his face is revealed, and it alludes to the fact that this isn't your normal hero, and that's shown throughout the film, but what I really do enjoy is that every scene that has the minor bit of exposition in it always either has something else going on in the background or is building up to something else because, or it builds on character dynamics. Because when Indy gets the idol, he's then stopped by Belloc, who is his arch enemy, and you get the dynamic between them in the fact that Belloc more cares about finding artifacts for glory and power. Indy, Indiana Jones cares about it to preserve history and share this knowledge and information with the people and how it like belongs in a museum. Those are the two different contrasting. While Indy uses shady means and shady efforts from tricking people to get that, but he does it for an ultimately selfless goal. When Belloc does more horrendous stuff just for s selfish goals. That's the point that I'm making here. And I like how that relationship between the two actors and both of them sell their characters very well is built up throughout the film and it works well. And another scene when Indy is discussing what's in the Ark to the two guys who ask him for his help to find the Ark of the Covenant, he's like fire, brimstone, whatever. It sets up that he doesn't believe in mumbo jumbo and the mysticism of that even though technically Temple of Doom retcons that out of here, but we're going to ignore that for right now, but... <laughs> but no, this clearly points out that he doesn't do that. While delivering exposition of what the Ark of the Covenant is, they build on him and Marcus's relationship, where they are both discussing what the Covenant is, or it sets up how they work together, and how Indy is this professor at the school, but he also goes and gets artifacts to then give to a museum. And he mentions to him, like, I can stop Belloc and get the idol back, 
I feel like that scene really does set that up well. And then obviously you have the, the date poisoning scene where they're talking about the Scepter of Ra to figure out how to find the to find the Well of Souls where the Ark of the Covenant rests, but you have the suspensefulness on the side that the dates are poisoned and Indy's about to eat one, so you have, an int you have tension building up into that scene and then you're still delivering exposition after it, which is a good tool to explore. Yeah, I feel like this film's story really does get overlooked because the pacing and giving exposition is done insanely well, and I would say that's up to the director, Steven Spielberg, and John Williams' score keeps most of these scenes also working because when you have tense build up, his score, which is phenomenal because I always just know, you know, the, da -da 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 -da, the, the very light adventurous score that he uses for the most action scenes. But what I like is there's a darkness to his score in a lot of the scenes in this movie, and that's what I really do enjoy. I obviously can't put a clip in that or else I would get copyrighted, so I'm not putting a clip of that in here. So yeah, I feel like the exposition in the story building up to the Ark of the Covenant, you know, Indy going to Marion, you get their relationship, not through just blowed out statements, it feels natural for the most part. The writing in this film does a very good job of building up, and especially with how Indy's proven wrong at the end with the Ark of the Covenant opening and that whole scene. But yeah, I feel like the story, the exposition, and the setup to all of that works well. What also I think helps the pacing insanely well is the action scenes. I really do enjoy them because obviously there's the iconic opening scene where he's going through the traps, which they have a fucking light activated trap. I'm like, wow, this place is really fucking advanced <laughs> to have a light activated trap that does that. And then you obviously have Alfred Molina there, who I think is doing maybe a brown face. I don't know. We're not going to talk about it. Um, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, but my version of the scene when Alfred Molina betrays him is pretty much like he says, Throw me the idol, I throw you the win. Then he, then he tosses in the idol and then he's like, so long, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Give me the fucking idol. <laughs> he just fucking shoots him in the leg. Anyways, so yeah, the action scenes in this are very well handled. I like that each of them has little setup and payoffs in the scenes themselves because you have the scene where Indy goes to Marion's bar and then the Nazis show up and then they're going to torture her to try to find the staff of Rawhead. But Indy then comes in to save them and I really love save her. And what I really like about this action scene is one, Marion helps out in it. Most of the action scenes in this, Marion does at least supply support, which we'll get into why I like her character a lot later on when I talk about character. The action scenes, especially there, you have the bar glasses shooting and stuff like that. You have them breaking them and then they catch on fire because of that. You have just so many little setup and payoffs in those one action scenes that I feel like it works out very well. And John Williams' score obviously sells the action very well. I like how the indie theme is only cut in when he does something heroic. That's pretty basic storytelling, but it works very well because John Williams' score is amazing. But then, that's not even my favorite action scene in this. My favorite one is Indy fighting the plane mechanic, uh, the big muscular motherfucker, and what I like about that scene is you think Marion is stupid from the fact that she gets stuck in the plane, but then she does. You think that she it's like a damsel in distress thing when she gets stuck in the plane, but then she gets on a turret and starts shooting at the other Nazis because, you know, Indy's dealing with the big burly guy who he has to, like, fight dirty with, throwing dirt and kicking him in the crotch to try to beat him, and... The action scenes in this, what I think makes them work so well is that Indy is human. He does, it does feel frantic and very hectic, but he doesn't just immediately John Wick somebody to death. It takes him a while. He has to, you know, take some punches and give some back. And especially in that scene where he's fighting somebody who's like bigger and muscular than him, he's still trying his best. And then that dude just gets fucking shredded by a plane propeller. Which, yeah, this movie's rated PG. You don't see the plane propeller shredding, but this movie's rated PG when it fucking meant something. And especially in the action, you see blood. You see, you know, obviously in the end shot with the people's face melting. And then you see Alfred Molina's body get impaled through spikes. And it's like, this movie is rated PG, but I would still say if you have like maybe a 10 to 12 year old, I feel like they can handle it. 
that's the surprising thing is because Spielberg, I think, keeps the lighter tone in those other scenes. So then the scenes they have work well enough. And the effects in the action scenes work very well. The stunt choreography, especially in my second favorite action scene, the truck action scene, when Indy's driving the truck with the Ark of the Covenant in the back of it, and he's trying to get it out of there. I really enjoy the fact that he's just hitting them off the road, and you see him, like, grabbing onto the front of the of the truck, and then he crawls under the truck, which is a great stunt moment from... I don't think that was Harrison Ford, but it's still a pretty good moment. I really do enjoy that action scene, and the practical explosions and the stunt choreography works very well. The effects in this really do hold up, especially when the Ark of the Covenant opens. Even though I feel like some of the matte screening effects, like of the stormy sky in the background, don't work as well, but I feel like the direction of those scenes, because it's when the Ark of the Covenant, when they finally get into the Well of Souls, I like that the the score is very dark, as almost it's building up an ominous tone of dread, and then you have thunder, lightning cracking in the background to build up the reveal of the Ark of the Covenant, and then you see all the snakes in there, and you get one of my favorite lines, the most, one of the most iconic lines of the film. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? But no, most of the directing scenes work very well because of the in tone with John Williams' amazing score and just the lighting and cinematography. I think of also the Staff of Raw scene. Very iconic, very beautiful scene of Indy using the Staff of Raw to find where the location is. But then you have Sala panicking because the Nazis saw him and he's trying to save Indy from the pit before anybody sees him, which building tension while still delivering exposition. Great way there. So now let's talk about the characters. Indy himself is very good. I love Harrison Ford's performance as Indiana Jones. As I said, it builds him as a darker character who, who does some under-the-law type things, but to eventually have an end goal. And that's contrasted with Belloc, who does similar things, but he does it for a selfish goal. And Paul Freeman and Harrison Ford have such a good dynamic to each other that it, they really do build off of each other. You have a good antagonist through Paul Fre Freeman's acting, and you have such as good of his antagonist as Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford. And most of the scenes of them building up to this, as I said, it shows that Indy loves history, and he just wants to get these artifacts so then they can get in a museum and be enjoyed by all. Belloc just cares about making a quick dime and stuff like that. And... Those scenes, especially when they interact with each, build on that type of back-and-back -back relationship that they have. And then Indy's relationship with Marion is very well done. Karen Allen is very good in this. As I said, I really do like that she helps out in a lot of the action scenes. She's just not a damsel in distress who needs rescuing, which will be a problem when we reach a Temple of Doom. But I'm talking so much shit about Temple of Doom when... I actually kind of like that movie. We'll get to it when I cover Temple of Doom. But, as I said, I feel like she works very well with Indy from the fact that their relationship is building. And I like that when Indy thinks that she, he gets Marion killed by blowing up a truck that she was in, he genuinely feels awful and bad about it. And Belloc pretty much is like, you did this to her. I didn't want any of this to happen. And that is such a dick move, Belloc. And this leads to my favorite line by Harrison Ford in this movie. He sells it perfectly when Balak's like, I want the Ark to talk to God and be a telecommunication. This line is fucking awesome. You want to talk to God? Let's go see him together. But then I like Indy's relationship with Sala, played by John Reese davies and how he has this, like, friendship bond with him and he's like kind of a goofy guy but he still really cares and helps Indy especially when he and Indy are him and Marion are leaving at the boat and Sala's like listen you take care of those two they're good friends of mine and I love that scene he's such a nice character and I love that John Reese davies is coming back in Dial of Destiny he's one of my favorite characters in the franchise and he plays the character the part very well and I really do enjoy that he's just not the comedic side kick, but he he kind of is, but he also cares about them, and there's general character there, which I like. And as I said, I love 
Indiana Jones and Marion's relationship because they established that Indy knew her father, Abner Ravenwood, and that, you know, when she was younger, he, her and Indy had a relationship of some kind, but then they split it off, and she's pissed at him at first. But what I like is that they get back together in a very good way by just building on their chemistry as actors, and I feel like that works well. And as I said, Marion is a very confident woman without having to say a whole girl power message, which I like. They don't have to say that. She's just a good character in general. And, you know, as I said, I really do enjoy their back and forth relationship type asks things. Marion trying to escape from Belloc when he's trying to like be sleazy and an ass to her. I like that scene, how she constantly is trying to escape and help Indy in any way that he can. And I love the moment when Indy finds Marion still alive. Both of those actors sell it well, but then it goes back into Indy's kind of half and half thing of like, listen, I can't, I can't save you right now because I have to go get the Ark. And that plays into the final scene, one of my favorite scenes in the climax. And even when Indy's hurt and on the boat and he's hurt because he was in an action scene, they have such a good romantic scene where he's like where she's trying to help him and he's like I don't need a hurt I don't need a nurse everything hurts and she's like where's the part that doesn't hurt and then he points at his elbow and then she starts kissing him in po places that he points at and I was just like just point at your crotch man <laughs> but no um and then let's talk about the climax because it's the climax of the character motives and stuff like that because in the climax you have a very similar thing when Indy follows the boat that they're on gets you know hijacked by the nazis and then they go to this island to open the ark of the covenant to make sure there's stuff in it before handing it to the Fuhrer. and what i really like about that is indy then follows them there to save marion and get the ark and they're transporting the ark to this ritual spot indy has a rocket launcher aimed at the ark and he's like i will blow it up i don't care about the ark i just want marion but then Belloc is like, everybody step back. And then he's like, I know you're not going to blow up that arc, Indy. You want to see what's in there as much as I do. And I really enjoy that scene because it's kind of similar to the scene earlier where he, di he didn't try to save Marion. He cared more about the arc. And in this scene, he's really struggling between whether to do it or to save to blow up the ark to save marion because belloc knows that he won't and then paul freeman delivers this really good bit of dialogue when a fly goes into his mouth i still find that as hilarious as it is that each time i watch it i always notice that thing and i love it probably my favorite scene in this is when the ark of the covenant opens and you get the thunder and storm clouds is almost God saying, like, don't fucking open that, you idiots. You're going to have a big-ass problem if you open that forbidden thing. And I really do enjoy the wispy ghost effects of the of what the horrors of what's inside the Ark being released. And then the scream that happens as John Williams' music takes a darker tone. And then you get the gory as fuck face melting and the effects of the animation of, like, the fire and shit that comes out of the arc is amazing and i love that we established earlier that indy doesn't believe in the mumbo jumbo of the arc and how he's like fire brimstone whatever hells of god and he keeps his eyes shut in this the the thing that he's wanted to see the arc opening he realizes that it's better to keep his eyes shut and keep marion's eyes shut so then so then they're both safe and uh, yet again, movie rated PG, you see faces melting the fuck off and stuff like that. And then I like the ending where Marcus and Indy are talking to the two guys who got the Ark after all the Nazis were killed by the Ark of the Covenant opening. Not all the Nazis, you know what I mean. <laughs> but then they're like, it's in a safe place. People are researching it and they're like, listen, this has untapped power. We need to research it and stop it. And they're like, it's fine. And then you see the crate being transported to what I think is revealed to be Area 51 in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And then obviously you have Ma Indy choosing Marion at the end and then they walk off to go have a drink and stuff like that. And that wraps up the longest review I probably had on the channel of Indiana Jones 
and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Obviously, I think that this is one of the best action movie action. I think that this is a very good action adventure movie. It it it's a very good Spielberg movie. It sets it up for kids, even if it's a bit darker. But if you believe your kids can handle it, I definitely recommend it. I really do enjoy this. The character and the story progression really works well. The actors do such a great job of setting up things. Action scenes and pacing are very well done overall in this. But uh. What did you guys think of Indiana Jones and the Ra Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> Please leave your opinions in the comment sections down below. If you, have, if you have any other reviews or thoughts on this review, leave those in the comment section as well. Make sure to like and subscribe and share the channel. I always like to see the growth of it. And yeah, the next two movies I will review are Searching and Missing. Searching will probably be not as in-depth as this review, even though I can probably get movie footage of it because I gotta get it out earlier. But when it comes to classics of cinema or films that I feel like deserve a full-length review, that's when I'll do this type of thing. But yeah, I will see you all next time.